Thank you so much for being here today. We have met here today to remember the beautiful life of Justin Campbell. And uh, thank you to all those who came to support uh, this precious family during this time and to be an encouragement to their heart. Let's have a word of prayer together and then we'll have a few gentlemen speak for us. Father, as we come to you, we pray that you would bless the hearts of these two precious people that we love so dearly. Uh, God, that you would encourage their heart, other members of the family. And we pray today, Lord, as we reflect on the life that you gave Justin and the gift that uh, Justin was to his family and so many of his friends, we ask, dear Father, that you will uh, bless this time and that you will bless each speaker as they uh, share their heart. And we pray that you would be glorified in all that we say or do, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Mr. Michael Bowen is going to come and speak for us. Uh, Mike knew Justin well, and uh, you come and share. Well, it is uh, an honor and a privilege to, to be among you guys. Um, I know that uh, we're, it's, it, it's a tough moment right here. We're, um, we're celebrating the life of Justin. There, there's a celebration of who he was and, and uh, how he impacted each of our lives. I know individually, um, super special young man to me, um, but also mourning. Uh, even, even a year later, um, that mourning process doesn't have a timeline. We, we still have to, to, to wake up each and every day missing those that, that have gone on before us. And um, it, it's a difficult thing, but uh, thanks be to God's grace and his mercy uh, to see us through those times. Um, I know that uh, Miss Deborah and um, her husband have, have had gone through a difficult time and um, are still facing each and every day waking up um, missing Justin. So, uh, you know, I, I want to just touch on his life. Um, it's not about me, but my name is Michael Bowman, and I had the privilege and opportunity uh, to be Justin's Sunday school teacher. Um, so just to kind of put that in perspective, I, I, I taught those uh, young adults, young men, young women who had uh, graduated high school, moved on, and as you probably know, there are some young people here that uh, you, you recognize, you, you come out of high school, uh, maybe don't recognize it, but life, life is a journey after that for sure. And so some were uh, going to college, some had careers, uh, some were still trying to find their place in life. And, and that's, that, that, that's a reality that, uh, that I was able to, to watch these young adults um, grow, uh, not only in their lives, but most importantly in their faith in, in the Lord. Um, and we'll, you know, if you talk about Justin, if, if, when you remember him, uh, for me, it was uh, an infectious smile and a, an infectious laughter, um, honestly, a sarcastic humor, um, but a precious young man. Um, and, you know, the thing about it is, is that in life, God, God makes each individual person different and he, he was a special young man, and every time I had an opportunity to see him, hug his neck, speak with him, it was always a, a good, cherished memory. And so I, I want to touch on something that was important to me, um, getting to know him, and that was that um, he, he, did, he struggled uh, in, in areas of life uh, in and I don't want to. I don't want to focus on that. But the truth of the matter is, we all we all struggle in life in different places for different reasons. Um, and so he he would always be um, kind of in and out of of our Sunday school class. Um, and I think that had a lot to do with the struggles and the questions that he had. And they're real. They are real. And. Um, we always wanted to um, accommodate the fact that we, we weren't going to close off to, to people who had questions or struggled in places of their lives. Uh, and I wanted to, both Robin and I um, co-taught that class, and so we wanted to be certain 
hey, if you ever have questions, and that was to all of them, do not hesitate to, to talk to us and ask questions. Um, whatever it is, I may not even have the answers, but we'll, we'll see through it together. And that's what God's calling us to do is, is, as brothers and sisters in Christ, to bear each other's burdens and to walk along each other's paths with each other and, and hold each other up. And so with that said, I, I want to reflect on a moment um, that we, we, we've got commu communication uh, of the fact that Justin was a precious soul, okay, and, and a lot of characteristics that were special about him. Um, but one that stood out to me was a moment nobody else can share because it's a moment that just Justin and I had together. And that was he'd reached out um, and said, Michael, uh, text me and said, I've, I've got some questions. And if you, if you have some time, I'd like to, to sit down with you and, and talk about them. And I said, well, sure, that, I'd be glad to do it. I'd be glad to. And uh, so he invited me over came and sat with him at his house, and his questions were reasonable questions, and, and they're what we all face is, you know, I believe what God's word says about life, who we are, and, and what that looks like, but I struggle each day. I struggle each day with that faith. I struggle to, to wrestle through those places where we live in a world that is doing everything that they can do to negate God's word. And so we sat down on his back porch. It was a beautiful day. I remember it like it was yesterday, September. You know, early fall is coming, and the sun is shining, and it's just a brother in Christ sitting out there, laying his heart out and saying, this is where I'm struggling. And that, to me, take so much courage to say, hey, I, I need help. I have questions. I want to know more. And I told Justin, I said, I don't, have, I don't have the answers to all of your questions. But where, where I'm going to answer from is going to be God's word. And I'm going to relate to you too, Justin, that, hey, I struggle in these places as well. But we just went through. We, we sat together as brothers in Christ in the sunshine I could feel I can feel there's times I've told Robin about it I, I, the sun kissing my face talking with a brother in Christ who's struggling like I've struggled and to be able to share with him what's God's word say about it let's look at it and so I just ran through there with him we you know we, we talked about in, in the first chapter of Romans that from since the beginning of creation, God's invisible qualities, his divine nature, his eternal power have been seen in all things. That said, no one will stand before him with an excuse. It's hard to understand. I, don't, I, don't, I can't give you all the answers, Justin, but that's what God says about it. And then, I, you know, we talked about frailty of, of humanity. The fact that we all will one day die. And, and, and sometimes we tiptoe around that. I, I'll be the first to admit, death is not what I like to talk about. But what are we here? We're here gathered around a brother in Christ, a young man whose life is gone. And that God's word tells us that it's appointed to man once to die and then to judgment. And I reminded him, we're, we, we've, got to, we've got to remember What's important here? What's at stake? It's the soul of man. And I, and I, and I shared with him in, in the book of Romans again about if you confess with the Lord, you confess the Lord Jesus with your heart and your mouth, you'll be saved. And I remember him sitting there and we're, we're, we're sharing and laughing and I could tell he, he, he was certainly pleased to be able to ask questions with no judgment and understand my heart was that I don't have the answers, but I'll give you what I have, and I'll walk with you through it. Um,
But when I hugged his neck, I could tell that, that he was relieved to, to hear what God's word says about it, not what Michael Bowman has to say. I don't know what he did with that information, but I am confident that in a day and age where people don't ask the questions anymore, we just bury our heads in the sand and pretend like the reality of life isn't there. When life is tough, life is hard, we struggle. Each and every one of us have struggles in our lives daily. I don't know what they are. I know what mine are, and they are, they are fierce, and I have to fight those daily with the, the help of the Holy Spirit to get through those places. And it was the same for Justin. I believe he trusted in the Lord because we live in a day, nobody, it, when you can get to a place where you can get somebody to ask those questions, that's the work of God. That's the work of the Holy Spirit to come and encourage a heart to even ask a question about what does eternity look like? A young man wanted that answer. He was raised in the fear and nurture and admonition of the Lord. I know he was. That doesn't mean we're saved. But when you get to a place where somebody is saying, what matters most is where eternity ends. Does it? Eternity doesn't end. It carries on forever. And that's, that's really what it's about, is, is a young man who looked at life, struggled in different places, but was willing to ask the tough questions. And I think all too often we, we sweep that under the rug. And that, that is one of the biggest things that encourages my heart about Justin Campbell, was that he wasn't afraid to ask the questions that matter, um, because those were the ones that matter most. We can talk about all different types of things, but what matters most is, what are we gonna do with life? What does it mean? Where do I spend eternity? And that's what he was asking. And I wanna say this, in that class, it's not a, it, the scriptures point to it over and over again. We live in a day and age that says, you earn yourself to heaven. When everything is opposite in God's word, he says, it's not by works of righteousness which we've done, but according to his mercy he saved us. It's by grace through faith that you're saved, not of yourself, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We're not entering our way to heaven. It's a matter of believing God at his word, trusting in his precious son, Jesus. And that's what Justin did. And when sometimes he wouldn't show up, to Sunday school. Sometimes he wouldn't show up to church. My encouragement was always, if you, if, if you can, show up. But that's not your salvation. Because he struggled with doing that at times. But we'll have a young man come up here, a very good friend of Justin, um, just a moment, and uh, Mr. Craig. And I always admire him because he spoke so highly of Justin, uh, and he'll speak more about it. But when we would be in our class and he, Justin wouldn't be there with us at Sunday school class at times, we always would pray for him. We'd look for ways to send a, a, a reminder note, hey, we're thinking of you. And I know he appreciated those. He said specifically that he did appreciate those moments where we reached out where he wasn't able to be a part of, of our group, but he was still a part of it by letting him know we were there for him. Um, and, I, and I'm sorry, I, I may have rambled all over the place right now, but this is what God put on my heart. I hope that you hear that. Um, normally I would go and, and construct some speech to, to work through this so you guys don't have to carry through with all this craziness that, that God's laying on my heart, but it is what it is. Um, I'll finish by, by reading a few of uh, some posts that were put on um, 
for Justin when he passed away at the end of last year, or first of last year. Um, gaming buddies. And, I, and look, when we talked that day, sunshine kissing my face, he's talking games and I'm thinking, I don't know what. I don't do games. My son plays games. I, can't, I can barely keep up with that. But I always, I always admired that he, he was so good at it. I know he enjoyed it. And uh, here's some fellow uh, gamers that he played with online. I'll just read through these. Um, but they had just as much to say about him as I did. So if you'll just bear with me here, I'll read these. This, this one here is from uh, Alex Palouche. Um, he said, Justin, or Shuttersly, as we most knew him online, was a close friend of mine and many others. I met Justin in 2012 or 2013 through a Halo Brony gaming clan. We became friends and have played probably thousands or more hours of games together, not to mention the time spent just hanging out and chatting. A few of us, myself included, spoke to Justin just a few days before the 28th when he was in the hospital. A little under a week ago, a few of us became worried as we hadn't heard from him in a few days and we'd hoped for the best. Uh, but tragically, that clearly didn't come true. I've shared this obituary with other uh, online friends, so they all know as well. And there are many things I'll miss about Justin. I'll miss his absurd sense of humor and his laugh. I'll miss uh, talking to him about music and rock band. I'll miss him organizing all the chests in Minecraft because he can't, he just can't help himself. I won't be able to pester him to read Yuri is my job anymore which he never did really get to. And I'm sad I'll never get to play Halo Infinite with him or talk about Mass Effect Legendary Edition. I'll never get to do the late night puzzles I had planned for when he got better. I'll even miss him getting mad when we played games together because he'd wished he was better. I'll even miss him getting, uh, oh, I'm sorry. It's honestly all these things, these little things that add up and what's making it so hard to stop from thinking of him all the time. Just know that Shudder was well loved and will be severely missed by many. Rest in peace, Justin, I'll never forget you. And another one here. This, this young man's Noah H. Uh, he says, hello friends and family of Justin's. Um, my name is Noah, and much like Alex, I was a friend of Justin's online over Xbox and subsequently Discord. <laughs> Actually, introduced to by Alex while he did, ju did Justin all the justice in the world on his post, it was only a s sliver of the impact he made on us. As soon as the news got to us, all of those who were available got online to join our call and were there to collectively mourn and share stories of what we got to do with Justin. <laughs> Six to eight of us were there as soon as we could, and a few others even had their own midnight remembrance for him when they couldn't be there due to their life obligations. I told my mom last night that one of my closest friends had lost his life and while she was very supportive of me, she raised the question of how was he so close to you if you've never met him? And while this seems so normal to me, I realize that it's not so obvious to those around. There's this stigma that leaks over from the whole idea that video games are for lazy bad people, that leaks over to the community that plays them and that everything you do online is either done with strangers or evil people, when that's not the case at all. We would spend hours on end just talking and playing games with Justin day in and day out. We got to know almost everything about each other that people could know, even personal feelings and situations that we felt as though nobody else could understand, not even our own family. He confided in us as we did him. We we're all family and we all loved him as much as anyone else could. Sure, we never got to meet each other face to face, but in the grand scheme of things, that's the only thing we didn't do. But I know that one day we will all get to see each other and catch up on all the games that we weren't able to play together or talk about all the things we weren't able to say. Rest easy, brother. All of your families love you. And then this last one from Cameron, Abby. Justin was one of those friends that I'll miss for a lifetime. 
He was one of the happiest parts of my life. Hours upon hours were spent chatting with him about things that you'd think were pointless, but now are being remembered more than ever. Memories are coming to me out of the blue of the times that he had brought goals to me that had sounded insane or impossible to accomplish. One of my favorite memories of Justin was the day that we spent 26 hours together doing nothing but chatting away and digging a hole in Minecraft. The project was immense, but in the end it was completed. This is one of the many traits that I've loved about Justin. No matter how large the goal or project, he would always find time to follow through just to hear a smile or a chuckle over the mic. We had some awesome times together, and I must say it's been one heck of a run. I rem I'll remember you for who you were, the happy-go-lucky madman of the group. Rest in peace. So those are just a few, and really that puts in perspective um, the impact that, that somebody can have in, in another person's life. Uh, I think day in and day out, life carries on, and sometimes we get um, resilient in a way that sometimes is damaging rather than recognizing our frailty as, as human beings and that we're not to do this journey alone. Um, he, he will be very missed, and he was much loved. Um, I'd like to hand the, the baton off to Mr. Craig Wood. He's going to come. Um, share with us uh, because th this is a, a young man that was great friends with Justin um, and I always liked hearing some of the stories and things that uh, that they faced uh, as friends. Um, I don't know that he'll share all of those but um, I know this is a difficult time for you but I'll hand it off to him. So my name is Craig Furness, and you all if I haven't met you before. Um, me and my family uh, just came back from a vacation. The entire time I was on it, I was trying to figure out like the best way to come up here and uh, talk about Justin. I kept asking him, like, what should, what should I say? What should I say? Like, what's the best way to remember him? And um, they just said, just talk about who he was as a person. And uh, <sighs> um, sorry, Justin was one of my best friends, and he was one of the very few people in my life that accepted me for who I was and as Michael was uh, reading like what uh, his other friends had to say about him it was just like I was just like that's Justin that's Justin like that there's so much that was encompassing who he was as a person that you could go on and on about him for hours but the number one thing that always stuck with me is he always accepted anybody that came into his life. And that was the, my favorite part about him. Because no matter what it was, he always loved you for who you were, and he didn't want anything more. <coughs> and the past few months to a year, it's, it's insane how fast time has gone. without him. But not a day goes by where I don't miss him. <laughs> I wish I could talk to him about everything we used to talk about, whether it was music, games, TV, life, it, would, it didn't matter because he would always be the best person to talk to because you could just lay down everything with him. And 
Deborah and Steve, I love you so much, both of you. You guys raised a wonderful man. I'm gonna miss him so much, as well as everyone else in this room, and online, and everyone that knew him. And I know one day we'll see him again. <laughs> and it's hard right now. But at least we have the memories of when we were with him. And that is something that like I think about every single day and I try not to take for granted. That's all I had to say, really. I uh, just wanted to keep it short and sweet. And all righty. Thank you, Craig. And then we'll finish up here. Um, another uh, gentleman that had an opportunity to to be an encourager to, to Justin and, and was a Sunday school teacher as well for him. Uh, I think he's only thought so many special things. I mean, him and I even have talked a little bit about overlapping, you know, the things are uh, that, that we are so characteristic of Justin, but he's even got more to share. Um, so we'll have Mr. Ricky come up. All right, if you open your Bibles and turn to chapter, I'm going to, no, I'm just kidding. I think Justin probably would have got a kick out of that, too. Um, he also would have got a kick out of, I almost didn't make it here today because some meatballs in my stomach were at war at 2.30 this morning. So I know that's probably a little bit too much information, but um, Justin's humor was infectious. Justin's smile was infectious. Um... I don't think that there was ever a time ever recalling anything that Justin was going through in his life that I met with him, that I talked with him, that he didn't have a smile on his face or that he didn't crack a joke, that he didn't make light of the situation. I had a conversation with Craig um, probably about a week ago and we were talking about today. <clears throat> And Craig had filled me in towards the, the end of, of Justin's journey, or I'll say actually the beginning of Justin's journey, right? When Justin was in the hospital and he talked to him and the end was coming near. And he was talking to him and he said, but talking to Justin, like FaceTiming with him, you wouldn't know it. Because even then he was still with that smile on his face, cracking that kind of humor. Now you may have the question, how do you do that? You do that when you're secure in Christ, when you know where you're going. You know, Michael brought up the question that uh, Justin had when they were having their conversation about what does eternity look like? Justin's got that answer. You know, Deborah, Steve, I love you both very much. And I'm here more so for you than I am Justin. Justin, he's in a great place now. He's in the place that we should all want to be at. And if you actually look at John chapter 14 and verse 27, it says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives you, do I give to you. 
Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Justin, Steve, friends, family, Deborah, I know you're hurting. Don't let your heart be troubled. I'm here to tell others today that you can see Justin again. I'm here to tell his online gaming friends, you can meet Justin in person one day, not just an online person. Now, I'm not here to bash online. I think relationships can be built online. I'm not here to bash gaming. But there's something that God has created us for, and that is a personal relationship with one another. To walk this journey of life. To walk out your Christian faith. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The conversations that I've had with Justin, I am completely assured that Justin has everlasting life. And that answer is found in scripture. You know, Justin had the questions, but Justin wasn't afraid to ask those questions. If there's anyone here today that has those questions, come talk to me. I may not have the answers, but I will walk the journey with you. We will search scripture together. You know, I remember having Justin in youth group. And Justin had an introvert type personality. But when he was in the youth group, there was something different. There was something different when he was around other youth. Those, when he was around his peers, when he was in that setting. It's almost like that introvert aspect of him kind of disappeared. And he became happy. The smile, the cutting up, the laughing. I remember when we went to a winter extreme event and Skillet was playing that night. Now Skillet, if, if you don't know who they are, they're a, a hard rock Christian band. Me personally, they weren't my cup of tea mainly because I couldn't understand the words, <clears throat> but Justin could. And Justin was one, one of the most phenomenal drummers I've ever met. That was the musicality that he had, right? And so he enjoyed them. So there was another youth leader that was there that actually stayed that night with him while the others wanted to go back so he could listen and he could enjoy that. So now while I know that your hearts are hurting, you can know beyond the shadow of a doubt where Justin is, and you can join him there too. You can join him there too. Short and sweet, Deborah. I love you. Steve, I love you. The church loves you. Craig, you're my boy. I love your heart, my friend. God loves you. God loves you. So if you have the questions, any of you, any of you young people that are in here, you got questions, come talk to me. I'll be real with you. I didn't want to be up here putting on an air of spirituality like I've got it all together because I don't. But I do have answers that I can help. And with that, I think, Johnny, do you want to close us in prayer?